Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Call Ray, a couple that loves to play board games. Now, you may have stumbled in this video because you may have some friends that like board games and you just don't know what to get them for Christmas or the holidays. Maybe you should get them a board game. But that's a lot of pressure to get a board game or board games. Ooh. That's why we're here to help. Yes, we've curated a list of board games of a gift guide that we want to suggest to you folks. Our very first. Is this our first? Wow. Yeah. Look at us go. We haven't done a gift guide before. Uh huh. But here are just some categories, some games that we wanted to chat about and recommend for the holiday season. Yes, starting with Something we're familiar with, I believe, oh, hey? Yes. We're gonna give you them in categories, like Ilya said. So we're gonna start with two-player games. Mm -hmm. A nod to our two-player mind. Exactly. Now for our two-player category, we're gonna do two recommendations, and we thought we'd take one each. How fitting. Two, do you two, wanna two start? Players. Or do you want me to start? Uh, you start. So my recommendation is Splendor Duel. So this one is designed by Mark andre and Bruno Cathala and is published by Space Cowboys. This is a two-player version of the original, the classic Splendor. Yes. What you'll do in this game is you'll essentially take some gems to create more gems, to take, take more, more gems, gems, to create more <laughs> gems. So it's a nice cascading effect. It has that really crunchy, not necessarily crunchy, but that really uh, layer up. Yeah, it's like an engine builder, engine and then builder. you've got like layers and layers that you can build up to, because at the very beginning you'll only be able to access a certain number based on how many resources you have. You'll build those resources up and further your engine to be able to get more better things. Mm -hmm. So it gets really and really, really, really exciting. It always seems to be a crunch with this game because the win conditions three. that exist yeah, in the game, um, it's basically first to get to one of them, mm -hmm. and then that's it. Yeah. And it always seems to be a tight race, especially because this one is a two-player game. It's a lot of fun because of that. And if you know the friends that really enjoyed Seven Wonders Duel, uh -huh. this is a great game that kind of follows up in it. Because it has three win conditions, like Tyler said. It has a lot of dynamic ways of strategy. And it's a game that you'll just find yourself pulling out again and again, especially with a great tactile feel of all those chips. Yeah, exactly. It's perfect for the couple, perfect for the family, or perfect for a good friend that just likes playing board games with you. Or just two strangers. Oh, pay it forward. Pay it forward. How about you? Next up on our list for two-player games is Wingspan Asia. Ooh. Yeah. So this one is published by Stormire Games, and it's designed by Elizabeth Hargrave. Mm. This game is not only an expansion for the base Wingspan game, mm -hmm. but it's a standalone two-player game for, like, well, it's a standalone two-player game. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even need Wingspan to play mm. it, which is really cool. Yeah, it is actually a great pickup if you're interested in what Wingspan could be. Mm -hmm. This game will teach you exactly that. Mm -hmm. It will provide an expansion in a sense where it'll add more cards to your Wingspan game. Mm -hmm that already exists, you'll get another variant with the game. So you'll be able to play an even larger game. Yes. Block mode. Yeah. So that's really exciting. But more importantly is it can be played at two players. Exactly. And they've done this um, not to change the game too drastically, mm -hmm. but what they've done is they've added some extra layers mm -hmm. and you have this board that you've got to basically place your tiles on to claim specific goals after playing birds mm -hmm. or doing certain actions. Yeah. And not yeah. only does it have birds from all over Asia, but a cool new duet mode. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun to play with two players. So if you know somebody who enjoys Wingspan, this could be a great addition to their collection, potentially. Or if you want some friends to get involved in Wingspan Ooh. more, this is a perfect gift to grab them so that they can come to the table for a bigger game of Wingspan. Who doesn't love Wingspan? So now we've done a nod to our two-player month. Let's Why do not do a nod to the other month? Which is rolling rights. So which rolling rights do we want to take a look at? Let's look at two. Yes, of course. I will talk about Next Station London because I think this game is a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, this one is published by Blue Orange Games and is designed by Matthew Dunstan. Mm -hmm. And essentially in this game, you're making four different transit routes. Will they connect? Exactly. Maybe. The fun thing about this game though, is there are four different colors and all transit routes have to be those specific colors. The trick is there's four rounds and each round you are one color. 
one color has to start in a certain area and then you start drawing these lines based on the cards that are going to be flipped. So it's like a flip and write mm -hmm. if you want to be more specific about it. And you'll flip these cards, draw from your space to the next shape. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you won't get too messy because you want to be able to make sure that you can score the most points with every single transit line that you will be building throughout the game. How good are you really at transit planning? My favorite part about this game is that it's it's almost funny when you open it, everyone always gravitates and be like, I want to be purple, uh -huh. but you'll be purple for only one round and then you'll have to pass it forward. So there's no association of colors, but it happens every time we share this game and I think it just cracks me up. So if you want an inside joke with a game as well, this could be it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm suggesting this one is because it's relatively newer and mm. of course it's pretty simple to learn, simple mm. to teach. Uh, it's got that roll and write vibe that'll give you a bit of crunch. There's some nice little combos that you can get Ooh. going with it and it can branch out into a more complicated game because they've got extra goals and, mm. that you can keep in mind or um, personal um, achievements that you can go for. It's fun. My recommendation for the roll and write genre is delicious. Mm. So this one's designed by Eduardo Baraf and Steve Finn and is published by Pencil First Games. Now, here during the holiday season, it's quite cold. Very cold. So why not enjoy some gardening, enjoy some planting some fruits and vegetables all together. And <laughs> what a better way to do this than a flip and write where you get to see the beautiful vegetables and fruit before your eyes and plant them in a little little shoe. And you have the opportunity to also color in your sheets as well and be creative around and draw yeah. the vegetables and fruits. There's a lot of layers in this game, but at the end of it all, it's a very simple set collection of various ways. So depending on what comes out, you just gotta use your deduction and your strategy, your brains. your brains, brains, to make the best out of some fruits and veggies. And each time it's a joy, it's a great game to pull out. It's also played at, as Next Station London is at all the same time. So you'll flip cards and everyone's gonna make the decision. So everyone's involved and it can accommodate for a very high player count because you can yeah. essentially play with as many people as you want. This one, that's my favorite part about the game is mm -hmm. there can be so many players that are involved in it. All they need is a pencil um, and a piece of paper that is matching. <laughs> and that's our rolling right category. Now let's get into our other three categories. We're gonna layer in in complexity and start to grow, right. but we're gonna start it off with some of the gathering games. Say you're going to a secret Santa or a gift exchange, or you just wanna bring something out to get everybody partaking and just having a lot of fun. This is the category for you. Do you wanna kick it off? Yes, I'll start with uh, Green Team Wins. And Green Team Wins is designed by Nathan Thornton and is published mm -hmm. by 25th Century Games. And essentially what you're going to try to do in this game is stay on the green team. Because they win. Yeah, exactly. How obvious. Mm -hmm. But the best part about this game is the quick pace of the answers that you'll be giving. It's a great way to get to kind of uh, have like conflict with one another, maybe sometimes, maybe you'll be like cheering each other on because you're all saying the same things. But basically what happens in this game is there are three types of questions. You'll go through these questions and you'll have this little whiteboard that you'll write your answers on and you'll compare them at the end of the turn with everybody that is playing. You wanna be in the majority because if you're in the majority, you'll stay on the green team or move to the green team. From the orange team, uh -huh. suckers. And those will gain you points and you want to have the most points at the end of the game because that will make you the ultimate green winner. The green winner? Yeah, because green, green team wins. Greeny means new. Ah, you'll be the new winner. Greenhorn, because you have the ability to get to know other people around you. Mm -hmm. And it's more silly, it's more for fun. You may disagree with the cereal that everybody loves, but maybe everyone fills in the blank with the exact same. Maybe it's baby blank and then everyone puts baby pig because that's what everyone thought of. Oh. And it's cool to be on the same wavelength with the rest of your green team members. Yes, that is true. But speaking of games that are cooperative and, <gasps> and provide a way to get you to know your pe friends a little bit better, we have the next game. Which is? Fun Facts. Now, Fun Facts is designed by Casper Lapp and is published by Repulse Production. And this game is so clever. You're essentially working together to answer questions in ascending order. So you'll have these little arrows, which you'll put your name on, and then there'll be a question that says, from zero to 100, how scared of you of the dark? And then you'll write down your answer. 
and then you'll take turns placing your arrow in a way that you think will make it so all the people is ascending. So I know Tyler's terrified of the dark. I'm gonna go below him. Am I? Are you? Am I? We don't know. But then everyone reveals their answers and then you'll get points based on if all the numbers are ascending. So it's really clever. I feel like every question you get a little story, like how many different houses have you lived in or places did you live in? Mm. Are you afraid of spiders? Yes. How many times can you sell, say she sells cheese? I can only say it once. I tried twice. You didn't succeed. I did not. So there's, a, there's moments of laughs, there are moments of stories, there's moments of really bonding, and that's why it's a great game to really bring out to a group or a gathering. Mm -hmm. And I think these two games go perfectly in this category, and the reason we're suggesting them mm -hmm. is because A, they're a bit newer, mm -hmm. and B, they provide this new take, new familiar take, on things that we've seen before through mm -hmm. herd mentality, through just one, mm -hmm. through those types of party games that we're already familiar with, mm -hmm. and these just elevate and provide a new experience that hopefully you'll enjoy. Mm -hmm. Now last but certainly not least for this category we're going to talk about third one. Ready, set, bet. Wow. Ready, set, bet is designed by John D. Clare and is published by AEG and essentially this game is about horse racing. The best part about this game, I'll, I'll keep this quick, maybe, maybe I maybe. won't, who we'll knows. See. But the best part about this game is that you can actually have an individual take the role of the roller and the caller. So they'll be rolling the dice and moving up your horses as you as you go. And uh, you can toss your bets on during this whole time until the, I believe three horses reach past mm -hmm. the um, one of the lines. It's the first line that they'll cross. It's not the finish line. There's still a race left and you have to stop your bets there. Mm -hmm. And it's just wild, chaotic, full of energy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of betting going on. It feels like a real time show that you're almost attending, especially if you have a good caller. Mm -hmm. So would recommend. And there's also an app that you can use instead if True. everyone wants to partake. Yes. But this really is, if you're looking for a game that really gets the energy going, mm -hmm. this game is energy. You're gonna have people shouting, you're gonna have people laughing. There's gonna be bets made last second. Will they be successful? We don't know. Mm -hmm. And of course, there'll be big moments because there'll be upsets. Exactly. A horse you think was gonna win, who's been in a lead this whole time, all of a sudden, odds are not in your favor anymore. And they are tanking it. Yeah. How will it look? We don't know. We don't know. So those are our three for the gathering category. So now let's dive into the family category. Say you want a little bit something more intimate, but you want a game that will bring out the best in everybody where you can compete and potentially have a cozy setting. Yeah, some of these games are, um, we will call them, I think, like medium weight, medium lightweight um, games. And we'll get right into it with number one. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Fife. Fife is designed by Koch and it's published by Pegasus Spiel. This game is set in a exotic uh, vacation spot, kind mm -hmm. of like Hawaii, um, and it looks Actually. absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So during the Christmas holidays, maybe you want to get away in a different kind of way. This you game want to feel warm and cozy. Exactly. And hot. Exactly. So this game is probably the one that you're going to want to be looking for. Mm -hmm. I will compare this one to Calico mm -hmm. if uh, as a quick reference, mm -hmm. but this game is essentially you're building a grid of tokens and each line or column row and diagonal will have goals that you can actually place yourself and manipulate through the game depending on what's drawn mm -hmm. through the token bag. But mm -hmm. you'll place a token, either place a goal um, or optionally place a goal mm -hmm. and work towards those goals to score yourself the most points, complete those goals the fastest, and really grind and crunch hoping you get the right mm -hmm. tokens because it can get a little stressful right at the tail end of this game. Yeah, at the end of this game, you're gonna make decisions where you have to pick the worst of two evils. Mm -hmm. You'll either sacrifice this goal or this goal. What will you do? What will the next token that comes out be? But it's really cool too because there's five colors, there's five symbols, and there's combination of each of them. Exactly. So sometimes you draw the perfect token and then everyone celebrates and that's really exciting. But because you set out your own goals, you really shape the game the way you want it to be, which mm -hmm. in my head is always really fun. Yeah, and you can be like super bold and do all the crazy goals that are like worth the higher amounts mm -hmm. of points, or you can like 
stay the course and do mm -hmm. the ones that are right in the middle to make sure that you can actually complete yeah. them because the risk higher points, taker yeah. or strategy kind of calm there's a lot of ways to approach this game which makes it really fun yes exactly now if you don't want to go on a tropical vacation oh. you can stay at home surrounded by your beautiful verdant plants and maybe like a cozy armchair with a good book and a blanket don't forget about the kitty cat and the little, I always call them aquarium, but it's just a fish tank with one fish. A fish bowl. Fish bowl. Well, we're going to chat about Verdant. So this one is published and designed by the team over from Flat Out Games, and the art in this game is done by Beth Sobel. Mm -hmm. Now, Verdant is a successor of Calico, Cascadia, and now Verdant. And essentially, what you'll be doing is you'll be building a space, a house potentially, uh, many of rooms that will have plants and rooms with various pieces of furniture that will score you the most points. Now this is a strategic puzzle where you just want things to line up with each other and you'll be drafting from the center board each of the rounds trying to make the best use of what is on the table. Mm -hmm. your, at the, your end goal here is to make sure your plants become verdant. Yes. Which means that they have the best shade that they need for and the sun. rooms and, and the sun sometimes sun mm -hmm. you can't put plants on one shade right in the sun because then they won't reach their verdancy mm -hmm. so overall it's a game that where you can make some great strategic choices similar to some crunchy decision making but at the end of it all you'll have a beautiful three by five grid of rooms and flowers that you can reflect on and even learn a little bit more about yes it's beautiful it's fun it's easy to teach and once you get going it kind of just sails really smoothly perfect for the family one might say family. Speaking of families, what do you do in the summer? You go to the farmer's market. That's a stretch. That was not the best transition, <laughs> but the game we're talking about next is the Downtown Farmer's Market. Now, Downtown Farmer's Market is designed by Johan Benvenuto and Alexandra Droit, and it's published by Blue Orange Games. Now, this is a tile placement game where you'll essentially be going to the farmer's market and similar actually to the other two games, you'll yeah, be looking a for theme some here or something. A theme of goals. And basically, you'll be placing tiles to fit the goals that you've predetermined in the beginning of the game. Now, maybe this row will want no cheese, while the other one of the other columns really wants cheese. So you'll have to balance out how much cheese do you want to take. There's six ingredients, and it's a simple take and place in order to make your board the best board it can be. Mm -hmm. What I love about this game is it's really easy to introduce and teach to people, and it's a game that you'll simply want to keep coming back to because it's just so much fun when you make the goals work. And again, it has that theme of at the end of it, you'll have to make some decisions and maybe lose out on one of the goals. But which decision and what are you going to sacrifice to do that? That's going to be up to you. Yes, exactly. Sorry, I got caught in a yawn. Sneeze yawn? A snyan. 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 But I think it's gone now, so we can keep on talking about Downtown Farmer's Market. Well, what do you have to say? I uh, absolutely love this game. I made him yawn. I did that. That was me. Sleepy. Maybe it's the hat. Maybe it's the hat. It is warm. Yeah. Anyways, this game is fantastic. I think it's like... Like the other games, it's this drafting uh, of tiles, drafting of cards, of tokens, whatever it may be, um, and completing goals. So I think there's a bit of a theme there, kind of like mm -hmm. we were saying. These games tend to offer some uh, simplicity, but mm -hmm. a lot of depth once you get into the game and start strategizing with some random chance, meaning that you don't always have to worry about getting crushed, by somebody who knows the strategy the best. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Mm -hmm. All I want is eggs. Yes. And that's our medium lightweight family category. Any of those games would be great to bring out to the family or share with a lot of your loved ones. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got some family games, some gathering games, um, our notes to two players and rolling rights, let's get into a little bit more of beefy games. Yeah, meaty games. Meaty. Well, yeah. What if what if you're vegetarian? Oh right. Okay. So they're heavy weighter games. They're Wait. Just... They're they're heavier games. They have some strategy to it, and they're probably great for you to pick up for a Christmas gift, <laughs> or a holiday yeah. gift, or a holiday gift. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, or a birthday. Who knows? But gift guide. Uh -huh. Surprise. Wow. I'm gonna steal the spotlight here and start it off with ahoy. Ahoy. Yeah. 
So Ahoy is published by Leader Games. It's designed by Greg Loring Albright, and it's an absolute blast to play. Yar. Yar. So as it might suggest, this game is pirates, but it's a little twist on it because it's a little creature pirates. Mm -hmm. And it's an asymmetrical game. So if you're familiar with Root, mm -hmm. um, it's definitely lighter than that, mm -hmm. but it has that asymmetrical feel to it where there are, uh, to summarize, there are three different mm -hmm. types of characters that you can be. You can be the sharks, the mm -hmm. mollusks, or the bandits, not the bandits. Smugglers. Smugglers, smugglers. smugglers. So you could be the smugglers. And this game plays up to four, so how that works is there will be actually be two smugglers, but the game combines set collection and area control and this cool little, like, build your own crew kind of thing through dice. And don't forget the pick up and deliver for the smugglers. Yeah, set collection. Oh. Yeah. But it is mostly. It is mostly um, pick up and deliver. Yeah, you gotta travel the seas, make the best of the terrain. And the terrain's always different too. Yes. So yeah. that's always really exciting. Mm -hmm. But if you have friends who really enjoy Root, who enjoy that asymmetrical feel where you can just dive into a world and experience the goals of a character for yourself, Ahoy, maybe for you. Or for a gift for a friend, because this is a gift guide. Treat yourself. You can buy yourself a gift too. You Can I get a gift? Not for yourself. The next game on our heavy hitters is Lacrimosa. This one is designed by Gerard Seni and Ferran Renalius, and it's published by Devere Games. Mm -hmm. In Lacrimosa, you'll be helping write Mozart's Last Requiem. And you'll do this through navigating through all of his past, looking at his memories, as well as commissioning new composers to finish off the last Requiem. Mm -hmm. This game has a good punch to it. Yes. There's a lot of really neat mechanics, but essentially what it is is you'll select actions from your cards and work in various areas of the board in order to score the most points. The production in this game is wonderful, the art in this game is wonderful, and what a refreshing theme it is. It is, it really, really is. If you know somebody who loves music, who majored, who played any instruments, who has a passion for the world of classical music, or just music in general, this is a game you should definitely check out. A hundred percent. And then mechanical wise, it's got some like neat little deck building in it, involved in it. Um, there's set collections, mm -hmm. you want to complete your goals. There's a lot of layers to this game. Mm -hmm. And what my favorite part about, about this game is, is that once you figure out all of those layers, it runs so smoothly. So smoothly. So smoothly. It's like holiday butter. What's the difference between holiday butter and butter? Holiday butter is smoother. Oh. Would you look at that? Because maybe it's cocoa body butter. Mm. Doesn't have to be the turkey butter. Mm -hmm. I think I've been like trying to toss in um, comparables to some of these games, mm -hmm. but uh, Lacrimosa actually reminds me a lot of Lisboa. Oh, um, just uh, not as heavy. Yeah, that's a good so point. if you're pretty looking, close, though. pretty I think it's pretty close. Pretty close. But if you're looking for another game that. Um, reminds you of Lisboa, mm -hmm. then Lacrimosa is definitely something that you'll be wanting to check out. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, the hot game of the year, I think. Yeah, it came, it felt like it came out of nowhere. And it just punched. Pow! Yes. It almost was like a Nova. An Arc Nova! So this one is designed by Matthias Wig and is published by Capstone Games. Mm -hmm. And essentially in this game, you'll be building a zoo as well as a conservatory. So it's a more ethical yeah, zoo. Yeah, you're balancing the conservation and your business. Mm -hmm. So it's this neat little give and take, mm -hmm. but you do this through uh, building your zoo and your um, enclosures, enclosures uh, putting animals, putting animals them. inside them, uh, and basically just working through a lot of the different action sequences that are there, mm -hmm. upgrading uh, anything that comes your way when you're allowed to, and making sure that you can score yourself a lot of points through it mm -hmm. a lot of different ways. If your friends really enjoy Terraforming Mars, yes. or this uh -huh. game really is similar to it because there's so many different cards, mm -hmm. and the games are really driven by the cards. So the cards that you draw and the cards that you play will create limitless combinations, which will potentially lead you to success, or maybe not. Yes. This correct. is a game that's also quite long, especially if you're learning it for the first time or playing at a higher player count. It can be a two to four hour game. 
Yes. Yeah. Yep. But that's the fun in it. Mm -hmm. And because it's those two um, scoreboards too, you'll be um, moving your way from, yeah, like uh, one side of the board and the other side of the board and kind of trying to make your um, paths cross over. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to have the um, the biggest difference, big, biggest positive difference, mm -hmm. which is always a lot of fun. Uh, it's always cool to strategize, but it does get really tight at the end. And I think uh, kind of like Lacrimosa, mm -hmm. this game, once you figure out the actions that you're allowed to take, it s flows very smoothly and the game becomes a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for another meaty game, um, not because of the animals, but uh, if, you're <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for a game that's got a lot of animals in it, then this is the one for you. And there's expansion coming by later in the next year that looks at the aquatic animals. Because yeah. Tyler's been missing his otters. I have been. And that is our gift guide. Holy moly, that's a lot of games. Now for our question of the day, it is, what board games are you going to get as gifts? We will not tell anybody. So you can just tell us and we'll be like, amazing and hype you up. Because that's hype, always exciting. Hype, hype, hype. But or, we won't tell anybody. Or just, or you, you know what would be better to not ruin the surprise for the people that may be watching these videos? It won't be ruined. Just tell us the games that you're looking forward to <gasps> getting over the holidays. Oh. Or even just like playing over the holidays. That's a good idea because yeah. then someone can see and be like, hmm, Emily really wants Lacrimosa now. Did someone say gift exchange? Boom. Boom. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of content, let us know in the comments down below. Give us a thumbs up. Do all the beautiful YouTube things that you can do. Mm -hmm. And we hope you enjoy your December. We hope you have a happy, happy holidays. Exactly. But you'll see more of us, I'm sure. Uh-huh. We will see you in the next one. Bye.